Well, good morning, everyone. So today I have a clothing haul. It is quite early here. Some days I wake up and I'm just like a little kid on Christmas, very excited to start my day, especially when I have a full schedule and I'm doing things that I really like to do. So today I am doing this clothing haul and then I'm shipping out, then I'm thrifting, then I'm back home for an eBay interview, which I'm very excited about. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you can look at my prior video where I have the opportunity to share in the celebration eBay is doing doing for their 25 year anniversary. So I know many of you have been selling longer than I have. I am just completing my seventh year, but eBay has been around 25 years. So that's just amazing. And I'm really thrilled to have this opportunity. So that's what my schedule looks like today. And I am out of bed, probably about 3 34 o'clock. Yep, AM. So if I look a little tired, that's why. But I am excited to get on the road and see what treasure is out there today. But before I do that, I want to bring this haul to you and I'm also going to do a high profit thrift find after this. So first we're going to do clothing and shoes and then I'm going to talk about what's been selling lately during summer slowdown. As many of you know, summer slowdown is usually July, August where a lot of people go on vacation or they're just chilling. They're not on you know, the internet as much. But so far, my sales have been really great this year. I'm not sure if the shutdown has anything to do with it, but I will take it all day long. So please hit the like and subscribe and let's get started. One of the first pairs of shoes I want to show are these men's loafers. And you've seen me pick up this brand before. This is Bass Weijin. And the way you know that it's Weijin is it has it imprinted on the bottom. So hopefully that shows. This is a black pair that I picked up. Really nice condition. Leather soles, which I always look for leather soles. A lot of times if you find a shoe with a leather sole, it might be from Italy, but there are a lot of shoes made in the United States that have this sole. Um, Allen Edmonds has a leather sole almost always, I think. When I find a pair of leather shoes like this, and I realize that it is a pair of bass Weijins, which for me, the Weijins sell better than just the regular bass. The first thing I do is turn it around and look at the wear to the sole. And I talk about this a lot, or the wear to the heel, I should say. So if these heels are unevenly worn or have great wear, I go ahead and pass on them. I don't pick them up. But as you can see, these are in great shape and I paid $7.47 for them. So I found a pair in black, and I also found this pair in brown. So great find, and these are penny loafers. You can also put moccasin in the title, slip on, comfort. I really use my keywords to attract a buyer that is looking for a certain type of shoe. So not only the information which goes in first, so this will say Bass Weijin Men's Loafer, and I'll put probably the size between men's and loafer. So let's pretend this is an 11. I would put Bass Weijin Men's 11 Loafer. And then the rest of the 80 characters that eBay allows in the title, I will fill it in with descriptive words. Leather, the color, slip-on, moccasin, um, if it has a split toe, which this does not. This has, I believe this is called a moccasin toe because of the whip stitching. So that is the first two pairs of men's shoes. Next up is a pair of sneakers. These are women's sneakers that I don't think I've found this name before, but because I keep an eye on other people's hauls and, and watch what other people are picking up on, um, on Instagram and YouTube, this is All Birds. So that is, see if the light can pick that up. And I believe All Birds are really known for a comfortable fit. It's almost like it's not a fly knit. They're, they feel like a wool, which let me get my glasses and see if they are made out of wool. So what are these made of? Made in Korea with super fine merino. So they are wool and you can wash these. Delicate cycle air dry. That's probably why they have a following. So really nice. And wool is known for a good breathable fabric. It does absorb moisture and then dries quickly. So that's probably why all birds 
are well loved. So I picked these up, $6.99 in Goodwill. And the last pair of shoes you guys saw me find in a haul. I also found this day a pair of Chacos, I think we say. And I left those behind because even though my eye recognized it looked like a quality shoe, I was in a rush. I was filming. I was flying out, I think, the next morning. But thank you to all of you on Instagram that schooled me <laughs> and told me that I missed out on a good pair of shoes because now I know that Chaco is something that I want to take a better look at. But that same day that I looked at the Chacos and I filmed that, I found these shoes. And right away, because of the print, the stitching, the way that this is gathered, in other words, the work that's put into this shoe, I recognize this probably would bring decent money. So the name looks like Ot Ot to me, but somebody said it's another name. And right now I'm not remembering what they said it is, but I'm going to show you the label or the branding. I hope I haven't talked about these before. Sometimes my piles in the house get mixed up of what I've talked about and what I haven't. But I wanted to show this. And I talked about the double stitching. Again, I'm going to say that again. When you see a lot of work put into a shoe, you want to take a second look and run a comp. So if you look at these, they really have a lot going on for them. And how is this? Huh, I am looking at how this is. This is very interesting to me. You know, I won't even cut that out of this. I thought this was going to be Velcro, which don't say Velcro on eBay. Always use hook and loop because Velcro, as we all know, is a branded, copyrighted brand. So you don't want to say Velcro. So I expected just to peel this off and have it open up like that, but it's not. This seems to be really, I don't know, sewn on there. Very interesting. And I paid $5.99 for these. Okay, so those are the pairs of shoes I'm going to do. Now we're just going to do the clothing rack behind me, and I'm just going to discuss a little bit of why I picked the item up and what kind of money I think it's going to bring. Okay, so first we're going to go through men's clothing, and then I have a few women's pieces. First up, we all know this name. This is the North Face. Anytime I see the North Face, I pick it up, unless it's a very plain t-shirt. If I get the very plain t-shirt for like 50 cents at a yard sale, I go ahead and pick it up if it's in good condition. But if I'm in a thrift store and they want you know, $5 or some of them know the name, the North Face, and they up price it. A lot of times I don't pick up plain the North Face t-shirts in men's or women's. Could be a mistake, but I don't see that it's bringing the money worth paying that much for. But a jacket always, especially if it's in great condition like this one. So that is item number one. Next up is just a plain Nike. It has the swish emblem jacket and this one is made in I'm looking Thailand when you see clothing that's made in Thailand Malaysia Hong Kong you know almost always that it's older than 20 years old that's my understanding of it so 20 years is considered vintage like on Etsy posh um, eBay out in the real world 30 years is vintage but in clothing I think it's okay if the item is older than 20 years old to go ahead and say it's a vintage jacket so that's basically why I picked this up and this is what the back looks like now even though this is not Nike's golf label because Nike puts out a golf label in other words apparel made just for golf I will go ahead and use golf or sporting or boating in the title as one of those descriptive keywords at the end of my title if I can fit it after I've put in the pertinent information. So this will be like a night vintage Nike and then the size men's jacket, windbreaker, and I'll add any keywords like this one I might have put in mesh lining you know, different attributes of the piece that people might be looking for. So that is item number two. I'm sorry, I forgot to say what I've been looking for these pieces, and these are listed. I think I've got this on, don't quote me, for about the $30 mark. Could be wrong about that. I should have written this down. I will try to give you a feel for what I'm pricing my items at. 
Okay, the next brand is a brand I was thrilled to find. I was in the Off the Beaten Path thrift stores. One of my videos is something like that. And I found this brand. Whenever I find this brand, the first thing I do is check the condition of the item. And then if condition is good, go ahead and pick it up. That's my rule. This is, this is the brand Loudmouth. Loudmouth makes golf apparel. I don't know if Loudmouth makes any other kind of sporting apparel like tennis or anything. I've only found the golf apparel. But this is what the inner band looks like of these men's shorts. Aren't these great? Loudmouth almost always has crazy wild prints and the crazier the better. I have sold um, quite a bit of Loudmouth and always gotten very good money. So I'm guessing these are going to bring about $30 and I found this one, which it's not quite a madras plaid, but I could probably get away with that keyword. Madras plaid is when it's a patchwork plaid with alternating direction of which way the plaid goes. So these kind of have a vertical plaid, even though plaid is printed, you know, horizontal and vertical. When you see madras, M-A-D-R-A-S, I don't know if it's a Spanish origin, but if you see madras plaid, that plaid brings attention. So if you have golf apparel that you can use that keyword, it brings even more attention. And like I said, I think I could use madras. I don't think I did this time, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the branding. See that embroidered LM for Loudmouth? Loudmouth is a really nice company. Their new items, um, you know, when you find an item that has tags, very good money. I paid, what did I pay for men's shorts? $4.25. So this was the first Loudmouth I found. And here is the second one. Yep, these are men's golf shorts, kind of like a Bermuda length. Now, this one is a cotton spandex. And the other one is just a cotton. Most times I'm finding my golf buyers want a little bit of spandex in their clothing. So in the title of the prior one, the first one I showed you, I put 100% cotton because I don't want my golf buyer to be disappointed that that item does not have as much stretch. But these do have a little bit of spandex in them. And this is the inner banding. Again, really nice quality. Seeing if this has the embroidered logo, I don't see it on this one. So this item has a very small tag on the inside. This is usually on the side seam, like a woman's blouse would be. They don't have the regular tag in the back waistband, but you can always tell loudmouth fairly quickly by the craziness of the print, the inner banding, and even the pockets are the logo loudmouth print. Okay, so that's item number two. Again, $4.25. And I think, I, I think I'm selling these for about the $30 mark. The third item that I wanna show is this loudmouth golf shirt. Look how crazy this is. What a great print. Paisley, skull and crossbones. And there is the branding on this one, loudmouth. Now this would have done better, I think, if this was like a 1X or a 2X. And right now, this one is just a large. But I went ahead and picked it up. So I said yes to that, and I paid $4.25 for it. The next item that I want to talk about, which I've spoken about before, but I think it's important to talk about, because I sell a lot of these, men's cargo shorts. So this is the pair I found this time. These are put out by Eastern Mountain Sports. Eastern Mountain Sports is a store in my local mall, and this is a men's pair of shorts. When I find cargo shorts, no matter what brand it is, unless it's a really off brand or a low end brand, the first thing I do is feel the quality of the material. It seems to me that men are looking for the cargo shorts that are a heavier material. They're, they're like a heavy duty. 
and this is actually made out of it's a cotton but it's a sailcloth cotton sailcloth cotton is almost like a stop rip or a no rip it has a stronger quality to the fabric the way you can tell sailcloth is when you look at the cloth i'm hoping the camera will pick this up the, it almost has like a cross hatch in it. When you look closely at the material, you see lines going vertical and horizontal. It's not in the print of the item. This one is a solid print, but it is in the actual cloth. It's the way the cloth is woven. Sometimes sail cloth, I think the original is sails were made out of it uh, for boats, and they did that. They did that cross weaving to keep sails from ripping. And then somewhere along the line, clothing manufacturers caught on that people would want clothing that has a higher durability. So having said all of that, cargo shorts in middle to better names I always pick up in men's clothing. I believe I paid $4 for these and what do I have these on for? I'm going to say between the 24 to 28 range, something like that. Okay, keeping on with men's clothing. I found this L.L. Bean flannel shirt. This is gorgeous. There are many things I love about this shirt. L.L. Bean's quality is beautiful, especially in their older clothing. So I'm never afraid to pick up vintage L.L. Bean, even if it has a little bit of flaws in it. But I do really appreciate when I find L.L. Bean in great condition, and that's the case here. So this is the label. I'm thinking this is a vintage label, but I haven't checked this yet, guys. And I do put Christmas in the title, which I don't feel really halts a person from buying it any other time of the year. I do not list holiday clothing at a certain time of year. Like, I don't buy Christmas stuff in May and stockpile it to put it on in September or October. I list my items all year long. Because I have an anchor store, my listings come with the store. So I'm paying $300 a month for my anchor store subscription. And for that price, eBay gives me 10,000 listings, which would be nice to think I would ever use that many, but I don't. So I'm not afraid to put something on way ahead of time of the holiday or the season that it's meant for and just let it ride. But this shirt is gorgeous quality men's shirt what size is this a large tall which is great I love finding clothing in unique sizes now while I don't pick up a lot of like extra small petite or extra extra small I kind of stay away from the tiny sizes I mean if it's a great item I go ahead and pick it up but I'm happier to find items that are in the tall range big and tall um, women's plus sizes I do better with those than I do with the extra extra tiny clothing so yes to an L.L. Bean men's shirt that I'm going to look up the label. So you could do a Google image search for the tag or you could just put in L.L. Bean clothing labels and search by image if all of that makes sense. Okay, let's get off the L.L. Bean shirt. Okay, the next shirt that I want to talk about again is a man's shirt. This is AX, that stands for Armani Exchange. And it's a beautiful, I'm going to say like an orange coral color in a linen. And that's why I picked it up. Now, I have sold quite a bit of Armani Exchange, and I don't find that it brings super high money. If you have the real Armani, the couture clothing, that can bring crazy high money. But Armani Exchange, I think, is one of their, I don't want to say their lower end you know, levels, but it doesn't bring the money for me that Armani Couture brings. But I thought this shirt was gorgeous. I do well with men's linen shirts. I always put beachy in the title because I think we've all seen the commercials of people walking on the beach and the man has a linen shirt on with khaki pants rolled up at the ankles. You know what I'm talking about. And that's why I use beachy. So I don't know if a man would really wear this to the beach, but I use that as one of my keywords. 
Okay, I shouldn't have put the rack here. I'm, I'm feeling this is awkward, but I'm just going to keep on going so I can get this video out for you guys. My video schedule has been a little behind. Whenever I travel to Florida and back somewhere, I lose time, even though the time zone doesn't change. So I'm just going to push forward and keep going. Again, please hit the like and subscribe button as I got up at three o'clock in the morning and it's a little early. So just forgive all the mistakes in this video and we will keep going. I always like to show you guys what I'm picking up and what what I'm selling. Okay, this next men's shirt, this is Ulani Disney Parks, I believe. Ulani is the resort and spa. And I love this shirt because it has little Mickeys with ukuleles and surfboards. How cute is this? Now there's a couple of things that I want to say about these prints. If you do a comp on Olani Disney shirts, they probably bring between $25 and $30. So if they're in good condition, I always go ahead and pick them up. The bigger sizes definitely do better. So if you can get a 2X or a 3X in the Olani shirt, those bring higher money. This one is just a large. So while it'll still sell through and it's worth picking up, not as exciting as the bigger ones. But I thought this print was super cute. Love this. And I also wanted to talk about Hawaiian shirts. I do pick up quite a few Hawaiian shirts. My favorites to find are the vintage Hawaiian shirts made out of bark cloth. If you don't know what bark cloth is, you might want to do a Google Wikipedia little read up on that. Bark cloth is cloth made from the original bark cloth from the inner peelings of a certain tree in the South Pacific. And they actually like beat it to a pulp and turned it into cloth. And while that cloth was kind of textured and a little bit rougher, I think the durability of the cloth was the attraction. But when you comp vintage bark cloth Hawaiian shirts, they can bring hundreds of dollars, especially in the great prints. I will try to insert a few photos of maybe some current eBay uh, listings right now, not my listings, but of vintage bark cloth Hawaiian shirts. said all of that, there are shirts nowadays that are made that still have the same look and texture, but they're made out of cotton. They're not made out of the true bark cloth. So a little bit of a difference there. And I think quite a few sellers use the term bark cloth for the contemporary shirts, even though it's not true bark cloth. Bark cloth is also used in upholstery, in draperies, a uh, few dresses. I can't imagine wearing a bark cloth dress. It doesn't sound too cozy, but I love finding them. And again, just like with Loudmouth, when you find a true Hawaiian vintage bark cloth shirt, the crazier the print, the better. I think I've been fortunate to sell one or two. One of them was in the very beginning of my selling career. I had no idea what I was doing and I was in the thrift store just throwing things in my cart and my hand came across it and I knew it was different. Threw it in the cart, it was a great print and I sold it way too cheap. I probably could have gotten, I'm going to say over $200 for that shirt. I don't remember what it brought. I'm going to say like $30 or $40, but I was still thrilled with that sale. And from then on, I learned about bark cloth. So there's that little rabbit hole right there. And let's keep moving. Next up, I saw this shirt. Again, it looks kind of like a Hawaiian shirt, but not really. This is Team Apparel NFL, and it is the Eagles football on a button-down rayon shirt. I thought this was really cool. So I picked this up. Now you guys know me, I'm the most unsportiest person there is. But I like a good sport print. I thought this shirt was very fun. And it turns out when I comped it, I didn't find a lot of these. Now I did a really quick comp. I think I have this on because it's a large for, I'm gonna say probably about the $50 mark. 
Whenever you guys really want to know what I'm charging for something, go ahead and go into my store, Lavender Clothesline, and you can look through my store. You can sort it by highest to lowest. You can look at my solds. It's all very transparent. So forgive me if I don't remember the price for each thing. I think my head is filled to capacity and sometimes I forget, but that's my guess. I have it on probably 50 or $55, but it'll go on different sales. So yes to NFL apparel, uh, team apparel in sports printed rayon. Okay, sticking with the men's shirts, we have a theme going on here. <laughs> I guess I really gravitate towards men's clothing lately. The next item is Hilo Hattie. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. Could be Hilo, but I think it's Hilo because I think this is a Hawaiian brand. Let me see. It's a 70% silk, cotton, whoops, made in China. So this is a more modern one when you see made in China. I think Hilo Hattie was originally made in, I'm going to say Hilo, Hawaii. That's probably wrong. I probably made that up. But I believe it is made in Hawaii, the vintage ones. The vintage Hilo Hatties can bring very good money again. I don't know if Hilo Hattie ever made in bark cloth because quite a few of the Hawaiian shirts that are vintage you can find in bark cloth. But I thought the name still, even though this, I wasn't sure if this was a vintage one or not, definitely will bring attention. This is a tone on tone kind of like a, like a light gray, beigey, we'll call it grayish, which I won't use that term. I don't know that many men looking for Hilo Hattie shirts are gonna put in the term grayish. If you don't know what grayish is, it's a mixture of gray and beige. And I think that was invented kind of like, maybe by Benjamin Moore, I digress. Anyway, Hilo Hattie and two extra large, great size. And I said yes to this one. Some of the Hilo Hatties will have hidden things in the print. So uh, I can't remember offhand what the hidden thing would be, but go ahead and Google or comp search a Hilo Hattie hidden shirt and some things will come up and it'll talk about what little thing is hidden in the print. All right, you could tell I'm tired. <laughs> Let's keep going. The last item is another Hawaiian shirt, and I grabbed this one because this is a no-name to me, but it's new with tags, I believe. Does this one have tags? Let's see, yes. Here is the tag. And this is a three extra large. That's why I picked it up because of that and the print. I don't know this name, KS Island. Let me take it off the hanger so I can show you the, the branding. Uh, where is the branding? There it is. But I thought the colors were really good. The print was really good. The size, it's new. And that's what that looks like. Most of the Hawaiian shirts that you find that are kind of flowy are made out of rayon or silk. The ones that are stiff often are made out of cotton. I find the flowier ones, if that's a word, do better than the stiff ones, depending on the print, of course. I think men really gravitate towards the ones that are loose and just fall on the body nicely. All right, so I paid $4.25 for that one, and it's new. I'm guessing probably $25 to $30 because it's not a real high-end brand. Next up is a hoodie. I don't know if this is men's or women's. I tried it on. It feels like a men's because this is an extra small and it's a little big on me. Sometimes I forget that in some brands, men's category clothing will have extra small. I don't know why that's confusing to me. I don't find men's clothing in extra small that often. What I find is that the boy sizing of 16, 18 or 18, 20 will be bigger than a men's extra small. So I'm not quite sure. That whole subject is confusing to me. So leave a comment down below if you find a lot of men's clothing in extra small in any brand. I'd love to hear what you guys are finding. But having said all of that, this is Vineyard Vines. There's the little whale logo. Always yes to Vineyard Vines. Uh, even if an item has flaws, I will still pick up Vineyard Vines. It does very well for me. And there is the label. I think we all know that. And it's got the striped inner hoodie. 
Really nice, very soft. I love Vineyard Vines. I think it's a great company. Here in the United States, where is Vineyard Vines? Now I'm gonna test my knowledge. Is it in Maine, New Hampshire? I think it's somewhere up north, the Northeast. Don't quote me on any of that. I'll Google that right after this video. Okay, we have two more items and then I'm gonna do a high profit thrift finds for you guys. This is American Eagle, which we all know American Eagle. It's a mall brand. And the reason I picked these up pretty much was the style. Button fly, they're a women's pair of pants. Flat pockets with the buttons. Now when the buttons look like this, I put in the title almost always, if I have room, rivet button. Because some people really like the look of a rivet button. It's a higher quality look in my opinion. Because picture this if it just had plastic buttons compared to the metal tap, 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 <laughs> the metal button. And this is a skinny pant, olive green, really nice. And um, so I said yes to them. What did I pay for pants? $4 in this store. So I said yes to those. I'm thinking probably about the $30 mark for those. Okay, last item for the morning is this shirt. Look how cute this is. Now when I saw the tag, I was kind of disappointed because this name does not bring money of any kind. This blouse is an experiment for me. I think this blouse is so good that I'm going to price mine up a little bit. This is Jane and Delancey, and that's what the tag looks like. And it is a bird on a wire print. I love this print. So it's got a lot of black birds and then every once in a while like a colorful parrot and the size is 2x so i love the style i love the print great size and normally jane and delancey brings i'm going to say under ten dollars but i'm going to go ahead and price mine a little bit higher because i think the condition is good i don't know what i'll price this at i'm going to say 15 to 17 and let it ride for a while at that price and see if i can bring that price all right, so that is everything for today. Forgive me again if I've been a little scattered brain. It is early. I was filming by, I think, by 4.30 a.m. So now the sun is coming up and it might have changed in the room. Please hit the like and subscribe one more time and stay tuned for High Profit Thrift Finds. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Okay, so most of the items that I'm going to show you of these recent solds are high profit thrift finds in my opinion. I buy in very low as you know and make great profit on most items. But some of the items that I'm going to include in this thrift find episode are items that were interesting to me that they either sold quickly and I didn't know what they were or that the profit was even higher than I thought it was going to be. So the first item is a home encyclopedia of useful information from 1903. Now, while I don't pick up a lot of books, I would love to be an Amazon bookseller, but I just can't fit it into my schedule. This book was shocking to me. I paid 97 cents for it and it sold 31.16, but it did take quite a while to sell. I'm gonna say I had this over three or four months. The next item is a Lily Pulitzer. I love Lily Pulitzer. $68 I got for this dress and it cost me $6.25. Next up, I think you guys will remember this because this was in a very recent haul, Fenton. We all love Fenton. This is an apothecary candy jar, which I wasn't quite sure what to call it, but when I comped it, you know, the name popped up, $51.45. The next item, again, sold very quickly, and this was shocking to me. I keep making a joke about trying not to pick up single mugs, and I was so proud of myself, I found three of the same kind. Did look for the fourth, couldn't find it, so I think this would have been a lot higher if I had an even number, like four or six in the set, but it still brought $35 for the three cups, and I paid $2 a cup. In my haul video, I was saying that I felt that was a little bit high. I should have paid, you know, like two or three dollars collectively. But with $35 sale, I'm really happy that I decided to pick them up. 
Next up is an Adidas jacket. It's a woman's jacket that I picked up quite a while ago, and I believe this is shipping out to New Zealand. I forgot what address it is, 7629. And I do international shipping. Uh, I ship myself. I do not use the global program. That might change as we all get funneled into eBay's managed payments. But for now, I am still shipping international directly. I am very careful to weigh the item and give proper measurements because if you make a mistake with calculating international shipping, the mistake can be very costly. So I'm always very careful to enter the proper weight and dimensions of the finished package into the original listing. Next up is a Filson's jacket. It's a men's jacket. I found four jackets in one day, which I was thrilled. This one is new, $144.88, which is even a little bit lower than I normally accept, but I felt that it was a good time to let it go, and I believe this is the fourth one that has sold, and I paid $9.95, I believe. Next up, Timberland Men's Boots, $43.75. These are pre-owned. I do better with their leather hiking boots, I'm going to call them, or outdoor sport boots than I do with the work boots. But either way, almost always, I pick up Timberland boots if it's a good buy-in price. I believe I paid, I think this, these were either $7.87 or $9.87. Next up is a pair of cabby jeans. Now, right now, I am trying to sell through my women's jeans. I will no longer be picking up jeans unless I find something really phenomenal. Let me just backtrack and say I'm no longer picking up women's jeans. Men's jeans I still do very well with. $43.75, and these were the Constellation jeans. Next up is a Kuji t-shirt. Now, if you find the Kuji sweaters, the real textured ones that are rainbow colors, those can bring great money. I think I picked up this t-shirt at a dollar sale. It might have even been at a yard sale. $28.50 it brought, and I believe I paid a dollar. Next up is a longer burger basket. I still pick up these baskets, and I believe I showed this recently in my Instagram. If you follow me over on Instagram, Lavender Clothesline, I report back quite frequently of what items are bringing what kind of money for me so we can all learn to, what to keep our eye open for, you know, at yard sales or thrift stores. Next up, again, I just picked this item up and this flew out of my store. So no, I'm thinking I missed something, but I did run comps. I did find a couple of similar pots. It is a terracotta clay pot made in Mexico and it brought $51. Next up, uh, this item, again, I talked about on my Instagram because I feel this dress is beautiful. The minute I saw it, I didn't even care what the label was. And this label is Ruby Road. It was a 2X, beautiful condition, $30 it brought. Next up is a keychain, Swarovski. <laughs> I always have a hard time saying that brand. Uh, $30 the keychain brought. And again, this is a recent find. I think I paid either $1.99 or $2.99 for this. Now this BBC DVD set is Lark Rise to Candleford. Again, I don't go through all the DVDs at the thrift stores because there are so many, but when I see a series or a set put out by the History Channel or BBC or Acorn Media, Masterpiece Theater, any kind of PBS public television um, or English, British uh, publications, I go ahead and run a comp. This was $32.18 and I actually got this for free. Next up, I've included these Michael Kors eyeglasses. They are prescription. Uh, naturally, the person buying them most likely won't have the same prescription, so they will bring them to their eye doctor and get their prescription put in, but the frames brought $32.42. This is part of the Pottery Barn haul I just talked about. When Pottery Barn does a great clearance, I mean, we're talking where items are marked down and then marked down again, marked down again, I go ahead and buy great quantities. So this is the first or the second duvet to sell. 
I got uh, the California King sizes for 62 and the full queen for 42. So here I sold a King $194.99. And I think I've had this less than two weeks. I'm gonna say probably about 10 days. Again, Pottery Barn. Uh, I went to Pottery Barn two days uh, with one day space between to see if they had restocked clearance and they had. I believe I picked up 25 of these or 30 of these. 26.79 I lotted two together. This jacket or coat I wanted to talk about because it had a fairly significant flaw and I did disclose that the zipper on the bottom even though the zipper fully was functional on this coat, the cloth of the zipper was separating from the, the coat. Now, if it was fairly easy fix, I would have sewed this myself, but it didn't seem like it was really fixable. So I did list it with flaw. I'm never afraid to list items with flaws as long as I think they are still very usable and the rest of the item is in nice condition. $37.70 it brought. And I'm trying to remember what I paid for this, guys. I think this was at a half price sale. I'm going to say about $5. Next stop, I showed this recently on my Instagram. This is the Royal Nippon Kinrin, if we're saying that right, if I'm saying it right. Dish it was a small, you know, seven and a half inches across, $65. This thing was beautiful. Next up is a coat or jacket style I will always pick up. Now this one is vintage, it's wool rich. I also, of course, look for the Pendleton and a few other names. When you unzip and unbutton this jacket, the inside is lined either with fleece or a wool, but a lot of times it has a blanket stripe to it. So if you find denim or a canvas cotton heavy weight chore coat I call these and you open it up and there is a striped heavyweight warm lining you want to run a comp 6164 and again I think no you know what I found this in the bins quite a while ago I'm going to say a couple of months ago and I bought it in the bins so I'm thinking it was probably a dollar 29 a pound so figure under five dollars Next up is the pair of slippers I just found. These are Wicked Good. That's the name of the style that L.L. Bean puts out. And I talked about them in my thrift haul and on Instagram. Guys, you really want to watch for these slippers. The one thing you really want to watch for is buyers want them in good condition. They don't want them all funky. But if you find the L.L. Bean Wicked Good slippers, they're a fast seller. $45.56 and I have sold quite a few of these and I also own them personally that I treated myself one Christmas and bought them for myself at L.L. Bean. Of course they were running a sale and I think I bought them for most of my kids too and um, they're great. They're, they're just so cozy. And the last item I'm going to show, again, forgive me, I've shown it on Instagram, but this bears repeating several times. This is Robert Graham. The men's dress shirts bring very good money. I would imagine any of Robert Graham's items bring good money. This is a pre-owned pair of swim trunks, $50.25. So that's another episode of Crazy High Profit Thrift Finds with a few other interesting items thrown in. Thanks so much for watching and go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.